In the last video, we set up a plan on file server using Ninefront, but once it was all done, we had a computer that was now running just a command line. Now I'll show you how to use any other computer you have laying around to fire up a plan nine terminal to access the file server. As I mentioned before, I suggested to use the install script to install Ninefront onto another thumb drive. The reason for this is that it sets up the partitions on the thumb drive just like a hard drive. It will have a small fat partition with a plan9.ini file in it and the kernel. And if you plug the thumb drive into most other computers, it will let you access the configuration files in that 9fat partition. Uh, it will also have its own NVRAM partition which will come in handy later. The install script will write a plan9.ini file that will either mount the file system from the thumb drive or from the internal drive on the computer it's plugged into. Here I've modified the plan9.ini file to mount the file system from the file server. This means that you can boot up a plan9 terminal on a computer that already has Windows or Linux installed on it. And by using the file server, it'll be faster than the thumb drive and not wear it out. We are effectively using the thumb drive for read only. It just loads the kernel and boot configuration. All the other stuff like user configuration, apps, and even temporary file folders are handled by the file server. The auth equals will tell the kernel where the auth server is. The fs equals does the same for the file server. In our case, they're the same computer. And in the boot args, we are not referencing either the hard drive partition or the thumb drive. Rather than local, we call for tls, which is an encryption option. If this doesn't work for you, TCP can be used instead, but it has no encryption. The dash G specifies the gateway and leaving the other parameters blank means it will just fetch the rest of the network stuff by DHCP. So let's try it out. And here it is all ready to go. I went with the no boot prompt option. So it is now just asking for a user. And this time I'll try out the new regular user demo user. All right, it's asking to verify that. Put in their password. I went ahead and set the resolution option to ask me every time so I can plug this thumb drive into any computer. Um, I'll just take the defaults. All right, now by default, a new user does not come with a home directory or anything. Like Unix systems, you can make users that do some background task and don't need a home directory or personal configuration files. To all add all that stuff for this user, the first time we log in, we run this script. Slash sys slash lib slash new user. And there we go. We now have a bare Rio desktop. So the way all this works is that a demo user is the host owner for this terminal. Demo user has total control over the hardware and processes running here. Uh, the files for the home directory, Rio, and any apps that I run are coming off the file server. So this isn't like a VNC or remote desktop. It's closer to NFS on a thin client. Uh, Plan9 speaks the same protocol to everything, 9P. So there's no need for some separate protocol to handle remote storage. It treats local storage the same as remote storage. None of the programs you might run will notice any difference. With the terminal set up like this, the namespace magic is pretty minimal. Uh, CPU, RAM, video, audio, and USB stuff is all local. 
Um, the hard drive and password system is brought in remotely and you can access the local hard drive if you want and the local kernel will see it as the hash s device. I can also use this like a remote desktop. In Legacy Plan 9, the command to do this is called CPU. In 9Front, they added some new stuff and changed the name to RCPU. So early on in Plan 9 development, the people at Bell Labs came up with the idea of a CPU server. Like a terminal, they would run without disks using the file server but they would be what was at the time cutting edge multiprocessor systems sitting in the same room with the file server and using the fastest networking available. So you could write code on a rather low powered terminal and then tell the CPU server to actually do the compiling. So do our CPU and we specify a host. So we'll just use the demo FS system and you can see that the prompt changed. And you can also run Rio remotely too. And you can see here now that this stats window is showing the stats for the uh, file server. Uh, anything ran in this window will use the CPU and RAM on the file server. Anything run out here will use the CPU and RAM of the terminal. So CPU itself is, or RCPU is just a script. And so this basically does a bunch of namespace stuff to um, add in a bunch of components from the CPU server into this window. I also said I would give some tips on how to use the bootable thumb drive to fix a busted system. So the kernel booted off this thumb drive still has access to all the hardware in the computer. And that includes the internal hard drives. So we can check the kernel for that. Let's see, use the hard drives. This is the computer I did the uh, standalone 9 front install on. So SDE0 was the install drive and there's the 9FAT partition. So to make sure that the drives are accessible in the slash dev directory, we can manually add them. We use bind dash B, which means to mount it before any other drives that might be listed in there. What we want to bind and where we want to bind it to. So now if we look in dev, there it is. So it looks like it already was added and doing a bind just did it twice. So to access a fat partition, we need the DOS server. Um, if it's already running, you will see it listed in the slash SRV directory and it'll just say slash SRV slash DOS. It's not here. To start it, we run DOS SRV. And now we can see it's there. So now we can access uh, fat partitions. So to manually mount the that fat partition, use mount 
dash C, which means to go ahead and create a new union directory. We'll specify serve slash DOS to translate the fat partition. We'll go ahead and mount it in the slash n directory. And we'll be mounting it from device SDE0 9 fat. So now if we check, and there it is. And we can see the plan nine file. that was used to boot the standalone nine front system on this computer. So of course you can use SAM or ACME to edit this file. If you did something and the computer won't boot off the hard drive, you can get in with the thumb drive, access the hard drive and fix that. So hopefully you won't need to, but if you do, that's how it's done. But next time I'll be covering draw term and see you then.